Hi, we're back to present the maintenance section for the Classic Series Single Head Adjustable Pump. Before we get started, there's something that we need to cover, right Karen? That's right, Bill. Before working on a pump, always follow the complete safety and operating instructions in the installation and maintenance manual. And don't forget the required personal protective safety equipment. Use of this safety equipment is mandatory. In addition to the precautions that come with your pump, you must always follow the recommendations of the chemical manufacturer or the material safety data sheet and check local codes for additional guidelines. Preparing the metering pump for service can vary by application, but in general will consist of the following steps. Pump a compatible buffer solution through the pump for several minutes to clean the chemical from the lines. Turn the motor on-off switch to the off position, which is down or to the rear of the pump. Disconnect the suction line from the pump tube suction fitting labeled in in the pump head cover. Before disconnecting the discharge side, bleed off any pressure. Then, disconnect the discharge line from the pump tube discharge fitting, labeled out on the pump head cover. Unplug the power cord. If the power cord plug end has been removed, modified, or the metering pump has been directly wired, do not continue. Consult an electrician to aid in disconnecting the pump from the electrical supply and to properly reconnect the pump's electrical supply. The feed rate subassembly is unique to Stenner's peristaltic metering pump in that it is a mechanical control that controls the output. The feed rate control utilizes a cam and spring-loaded lifter system to control the rotation of the roller assembly in the pump head, which adjusts the output according to the setting on the external dial ring. Inside the feed rate control is a brass spider assembly that consists of a pin and spring inside the holder attached to a lifter. When the pump is on, the spider turns. When the lifter drops into the feed rate control channel, the pin engages the index plate which rotates the shaft extending through the roller assembly that squeezes the pump tube to dispense the solution. When the lifter rides on the cam, the pin disengages the index plate and the roller assembly does not rotate, resulting in no pumping action. For example, when the dial ring is set on the number 10 setting, the spider assembly is engaged in the index plate the entire time, which will turn the roller assembly the full circumference of the housing. At setting 10, the pump dispenses at its maximum capacity. When the dial ring is set on a lower setting, the pin in the spider is only engaged in the index plate for a short period of time before it is lifted out when the lifter reaches the cam. The roller assembly in the pump head will only turn for a fraction of the circumference and the pump dispenses at a lower output determined by the setting on the dial ring. The feed rate is a precision control that consists of mechanical parts that are subject to wear when the external dial ring is set at a lower setting. So the factory recommends selecting the pump model that is closest to the maximum output capacity within the requirements of the application. It is like the wear of brakes on a car which is dependent on the operator's driving style. When the feed rate control makes a skipping or ratcheting sound, or the pump output is less than what the setting indicates it should be, one or more of the parts may be worn. The cam, index pin lifter, and index plate work together, and one influences the performance of the others. At the lower dial ring settings, a longer section of cam is exposed to the rotation of the lifter. The lifter continuously riding on the cam can wear a groove in it. If the rounded point on the lifter arm flattens from wear, from riding on the cam, it may not fully lift the pin out of the index plate. The pin will make a ratcheting sound from dragging across the plate. The feed rate control will index inconsistently at different settings. A worn cam and or lifter can cause the index pin to drag across the index plate and elongate its holes. The pin will skip across the holes and cause index malfunction. At the beginning of the maintenance section, we reviewed installation points that best suit the pump. The vertical mount with the pump head pointing in the downward position is important for the feed rate control too. Corrosive chemical intrusion can corrode the index pin and or the lifter causing them to seize. The feed rate will malfunction and the parts will need to be replaced. With the modular subassemblies, a new feed rate can be snapped on quickly, but the parts are just as easy to replace. To replace parts in the feed rate control, disconnect power to the pump. Separate the feed rate control and the pump head from the motor.
Remove and set aside three screws, feed rate mounting plate, dial ring. When removing the dial ring, observe how the cam is installed. Then, remove the brass spider assembly. Remove the old cam and discard. If required, remove the index pin assembly by unscrewing with a box wrench and replace the index pin lifter. The index plate can be inverted to the other side or replaced. Clean out the feed rate control channel before installing the new cam. Apply AquaShield to lubricate the cam's angled tip. Feed the angled cam tip into the feed rate control channel and keep the 90 degree end in the up position. Place a thumb over the cam to guide it as it is inserted in the channel. Continue to feed the cam in the channel until there is approximately a one half inch gap between the cam tip and the beginning of the channel. Place the dial ring boss onto the cam's 90 degree end. While keeping the 90 degree end in the dial ring boss and the cam in the feed rate control channel, in a clockwise motion, place the dial ring onto the feed rate control housing and snap into place. Apply approximately one ounce of aqua shield to the bottom of the feed rate control housing and to the top of the index plate. Place the spider assembly on the index plate. The lifter tip should be positioned in the one half inch gap in the feed rate control channel. To secure the mounting plate, align the plate arrow with the feed rate control housing arrow and install the three screws. If the screws are over tightened, the dial ring can be difficult to turn. If the screws are too loose, the dial ring can be inadvertently turned to setting 10 by the motor.